Hi, my name's Richard. I'm studying a Master's in Computer Science, focusing in Artificial Intelligence at Churchill College, Cambridge. In my spare time, I enjoy squash, dancing and debating. So you are studying within Churchill College at Cambridge, right? right? Okay, so what does that mean for somebody who doesn't know? So Cambridge is almost like a bunch of different universities that are just crammed together. Each college has its own you know, facilities, its own professors even, and uh, Churchill's one of the biggest. It's a little bit out of the way, uh, out of the centre, mm -hmm. but it's got a nice community feel. So what that means is I live there, I eat uh, meals there, I'm playing on the college sports teams, but then I go to the department for lectures. Okay, so your academics aren't necessarily tied to the college, but your like living experiences. Yeah. Um, at undergrad, your academics are actually mostly done in your college as well. You have tutorials or supervisions, uh, depending on what you call them, uh, that are done by your professors uh, in the college. And that's the same at Oxford, right? That's right. Okay. Um, but then for postgrad, it's more focused on the department because you just don't have enough people in each college who can specialize so narrowly. Gotcha. So what sort of community have you found in Churchill? There's a lot of like uh, events that are run by the MCR, which is what you call the group of postgraduate students. Okay. And uh, you have a lot of people who even have their own families and come along, so it's a quite communal environment. So um, tell me a little bit more about like activities within the college, sports, yeah. societies, that sort of sure. thing. So I play squash uh, for my college and we've got uh, four squash courts just right on site so that's really convenient. Uh, my friends are doing football and the teams there. We've also got a pretty active music society so we have concerts and recitals every week. Um, as well as that, uh, we've got some academic societies as well. We have uh, people who are giving talks about, about their research uh, pretty regularly or people who are um, just, I guess, exploring, discussing things they're interested in. Very cool. And do you compete against the other colleges when you're playing squash? Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's, it's pretty competitive. Everyone has, is pretty loyal to their college. Are you guys the best? Not quite, but we're getting there. Okay. Now that you're here. Yeah, exactly. So I'm involved in a bunch of music stuff. I play the piano a fair bit and I'm in a choir. Uh, we just had a show a couple of weeks ago uh, where we're singing a lot of like uh, Disney songs or songs from musicals, that sort of thing. So fun stuff. Um, apart from that, uh, I play a bit of sports as I mentioned before and I, I've done a lot of debating uh, over my degree. So I was uh, doing debating training for the Oxford Union when I was there for undergrad and I've done content, uh, I've done tournaments from I guess basically most of the continents now, debated in America a bit and across Europe and Asia. Uh, this is the Cambridge Union, it's the debating society here and I think the oldest in the world perhaps. Uh, they run regular debates here um, between students and politicians, MPs or lawyers, people from across the world. There's one at Oxford as well, so when I was part of that I was debating against Britney Spears' lawyer and we had uh, a Oxford-Cambridge debate here uh, where actually we won it for Oxford, although now, I was, now I'm cheering on the other side. Um, the other thing they do is send students across the world to tournaments, so we just had the World Championships and the European Championships are coming up in a few months. And they invite speakers, people are like pretty big names uh, come here pretty regularly, so we've got a lot of American uh, presidents actually over the past few decades have come here at some point, as well as uh, celebrities, actors, all sorts of people. So I'm on a one-year master's program uh, in computer science and I'm choosing to focus on AI, specifically natural language processing. Uh, it's mostly a research program, so I think 60% of my grade is based on a research thesis, which I'm just starting now, and then the rest of it is from classes. So the sort of classes I'm taking are things like probabilistic machine learning, deep learning, and computer vision. 
uh, those are run by the university, but they've also got a lot of industry uh, help as well. So the class I'm currently taking is actually run by uh, one of the Google uh, research divisions and they're, they're bringing in lecturers to come and run that. And they're also paying for us to actually have uh, server time in order to uh, do our calculations. So these are like top of the line professionals from Google, from Amazon coming to Cambridge to teach these courses. That's right. Um, uh, most of them, of course, are still Cambridge professors, but it's actually not so much of a difference these days because a lot of professors are working in industry as well, part-time or sort of moving between them. What are you doing your thesis on, do you think? Uh, so I think I'm probably going to be looking at uh, some sort of uh, summarization or paraphrasing of articles, so things like, can we figure out what it actually means in different words? If I give you uh, um, a piece of text, can, can you figure out what the keywords are? And things along those lines. Me being an artificial intelligence program. Yeah. When you finish the program, do you know what you're looking to do afterwards? Yeah, I, I think right now I'm interested in becoming a research engineer, so working with uh, some of the uh, teams who are looking into the top um, AI st stuff go going on right now. And there are some pretty top-notch teams uh, from across uh, different companies, like almost every top company now has some sort of an AI division who's looking into uh, all sorts of things. Have you seen The Terminator? I haven't actually, but I've heard a lot about it. <laughs> Sorry. We're doomed. Yeah. So what made you start studying computer science in the first place, and then what made you look towards AI? So I was always uh, attracted to maths and physics and so on. And at first I wasn't so interested in computer science because there are a lot of stereotypes about what it's like. But I think actually that computer science is like the best parts of maths. It's, the, um, it's not like the really esoteric stuff, but it's things you can actually see yourself using. And also uh, be working in computer science is probably the best job you can have these days, uh, just in terms of uh, like a lot of people doing some really cool things. In particular on artificial intelligence, I think you know it's the, it's the next big frontier and intellectually it's really fascinating because we're figuring out like you know how does thinking work? How, how do we figure out things about the world? The sort of the really deep questions that used to be I guess a lot of philosophers throwing them around but now uh, we're, we're actually coming up with algorithms that we can you know figure out actually you know the structure of vision or the structure of language works like this and we can process it. So you studied computer science at Oxford. Um, what was the transition like going from the program at Oxford to the program at Cambridge now? So at Oxford, and partly because it was undergrad, it was a lot more diverse. I did a lot of uh, different subjects in computer security, computer graphics, and a little bit of machine learning. I also did philosophy at Oxford for about a third of my degree. So that was really interesting in looking at things like, you know, what is knowledge? So how, how can we encode knowledge and how can we reason about uh, things like probability uh, from a philosophical side of things? I think it's, uh, it's definitely been very helpful. I think in terms of um, the just a solid theoretical mathematical grounding. So outside of class, you're also involved in AI discussion groups, things like that. Yeah. Um, tell me about those. Yeah, so one of the great things about being at Cambridge is there are a lot of people who are really interested in the sort of questions like what is the future of AI going to be like and how is society going to change over the next few decades or even a century or more. So a couple of the groups that I'm involved with, there's one which is looking at the risks of AI. So talking about the technical papers discussing, for example, how do we uh, specify what we want from uh, you know, a very smart um, computer system because I think that's something that a lot of people aren't worrying about as, not, as much as they should that uh, people uh, sort of think well it'll be fine we'll deal with it once we get to it but actually that's something that we should be planning. So why is it, so, why is it something that we should be worrying about? Because I think in the same way that humans are smarter than monkeys and you know we, we use that in order to take control over the world if we come up with computer systems that are actually super intelligent, then it's very difficult to predict just how capable they will be. So overall, um, why did you choose to come to the UK for school as opposed to staying in New Zealand? 
So I think the universities here are you know, a lot better than the ones in New Zealand. I think that in terms of uh, just being in a part of a community where everyone you know, is really uh, bright and interested in their subject, that's the sort of thing that you can get over here at the universities. And, you know, because I want to have a career uh, maybe in the Northern Hemisphere somewhere, I want to get started with university over here first. What did you find was the most surprising thing coming from New Zealand to the UK? People specialise a lot more here. So in New Zealand, you know, you might do a uh, Bachelor of Science, but you get to choose which science it is after, afterwards. Whereas at most universities in the UK, you just pick your subject when you go in and then you study it for three years. So it's definitely the case that you want to have a pretty good idea of what you want to study before you um, apply for your degree. And you knew that you wanted to do computer science before you arrived at Oxford? That's right. But I actually, you know, it, it took me a while to figure that out. And I like went and studied engineering for a year over in the States actually before I realized that that wasn't for me. And so I decided to come here and do computer science and also with the philosophy as well, just to keep it, uh, mix it up a little. I think the main thing is uh, there are so many opportunities at the universities over here that you really need to figure out, you know, what, what you want out of it and go for that. So uh, a lot of the time, um, you know, there, there are a lot of research opportunities if you want to do PhDs. There are a lot of, um, you know, opportunities to get into acting if you want to, um, you know, go into theatre or something like that. But you sort of need to know what you're going for and, and figure that out. So that, I think that's the main thing, like sit down and seriously think about uh, those sort of questions. If you like this video and you want to learn more about top universities around the world, don't forget to subscribe.